Hey everyone, happy Thursday. Welcome to the Exeter Weekly Report. I'm your host, Hillary Dunnell, and I'm gonna give you an update. First up, we're starting with all of our new programming this week. Uh, check it out. Exeter TV is here to bring you the latest in government meetings, event coverage, and local programming. Some of our recently uploaded programming includes local board meetings such as the Rec Advisory Board, Historic District Commission, and Heritage Commission. New episodes of local programming such as the Seaco Sports Forum, Ramblin' Richard, and the Early Late Night Live Show coverage of the 2020 Virtual Memorial Day celebration, and, as always, a brand new Exeter Weekly Report. So recently, our videographer, Natasha Stoffel, got to see a tree planting ceremony in front of Lincoln Street School, and she took some great footage, and we can't wait for you guys to see it. Good afternoon, everyone. Town of Exeter, New Hampshire, a proclamation in the year of our Lord, 2020. Today is Arbor Day, May 21st, 2020. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees, and whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees in Nebraska, and whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout the nation and the world. Work that we wanted to share with you today that some of the students, this is just one example, um, that some of the students, we just express, we ask that they express themselves, whether through writing or a picture. Um, you'll see other pictures of the kids hugging trees. Um, this student council and green team member, she wrote a poem about her favorite tree, which is the maple tree. And she said, your branches stretch long in the autumn breeze they blow, beautiful are you. Her name is Caitlin, and underneath her picture she wrote, this maple tree is my favorite tree, and it holds a lot of memories. It was a tree at my old house. I always miss how beautiful it looked with the colorful autumn leaves on its branches. So hopefully this tree and still the memories just like this tree did for Caitlin. I'm so excited to be a part of this. This is really exciting. Um, I love the connection with the students in this process. Um, Eileen selected a lace bark elm tree and though it's not a native species, it is a species of elm that's resistant to elm, Dutch elm disease so and can have a canopy spread of 20 to 30 feet. So it'll, it, once grown, will have some significant shade to hang out under. Um, in addition to the connection with students hanging under the shade, this tree will also provide some great natural benefits. I'd like to thank everybody who's here and everybody who couldn't be here, and all the kids who are hopefully getting to watch this at home. Um, but thank you all for being here and doing this. And now I'd like to ask each of you in some sort of system, I bring a shovel up and put some dirt around the tree. Next up, an interview with Ken Mendez about future events planned by Exeter's Racial Unity Team. My name is Ken Mendez, and I'm from the Racial Unity Team. Uh, and we are a social justice organization for the Seacoast area. And I chair the board of directors for the Racial Unity Team, as well as I function as the executive director. But one of the things we wanted to do was to make sure that besides our regular meetings, you know, we had a, a learning component added to those meetings. And so as, as, as the board, uh, you know, discussed what's the best way to do that, uh, we came up with the idea of having a speaker come to those meetings and talk about topics that are current. Uh, from that, we led to a, a 
programming committee that's currently functioning that identifies the topics that are current and also we look at uh, how best to reach out to the community to share that. One of the topics uh, two months ago was uh, equity in COVID-19 in New Hampshire. We know that because of COVID-19, minorities are being impacted more than others. So we wanted to talk about that and see what the racial unity team could do to address those uh, events. Our website, racialunityteam.com, is uh, the way to connect with us. Uh, there's a form you can fill out and we'll be able to get back to you. Or you can send us an email at racialunityteam1 at gmail.com. Uh, June 3rd uh, at six o'clock, a Zoom meeting. Right, you have to be registered for that because uh, we, we are careful about hackers and things like that. So we want people to register and we'll send them the link to uh, the meeting that we have on Tuesday, on Wednesday, the uh, 3rd of June. We would love you to join us on Colorism because uh, we have a symposium coming up in September that uh, is going to address this and uh, that one was going to be an on-site uh, event at the high school, but because of COVID-19, we are looking at other means of doing that. So it'll be a, a three-day, three-week event, you know, once, once every week that we are presently expo exploring. Uh, but uh, that'll be in September. Uh, the dates are still to be determined. And now a PSA about the chambers in our community. What do the Exeter Area Chamber of Commerce, Greater Dover Area Chamber of Commerce, Greater Rochester Chamber of Commerce, the Falls Chamber of Commerce in Somersworth, and the Chamber Collaborative of Greater Portsmouth have in common? They are all 501c6 organizations and are ineligible for federal funding programs through the CARES Act. The six Seacoast Chambers sent a letter to Gerald Little, Executive Director of the Governor's Office for Emergency Relief and Recovery, or GOFER, on May 21st, urging policymakers to release some of the $1.25 billion New Hampshire received through the Federal CARES Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act to chambers and other organizations registered as 501c6 nonprofit organizations. They are also asking supporters to contact the Governor's Office for Economic Relief and Recovery and request that funding from the CARES Act be allocated to help chambers around the state. You can learn more by going to the Governor's Office for Emergency Relief and Recovery Facebook page, Twitter page, or website at goferr.nh.gov. To learn more about your chamber and what they do in the community, you can check out their website or their social media accounts. We'd like to take a moment to offer our condolences on the passing of Bob Stevens, an NHCCM member. He was an amazing advocate for community media and an inspiration. All right, everybody, thank you for watching the Exeter Weekly Report, and we've got your four-day forecast coming up, and you have a great weekend. Stay safe. Friday will be mostly cloudy, with a high of 87 degrees and a low of 68 degrees. Sunday will be mostly cloudy, with rain expected in the late afternoon. The temperature range will be from a high of 83 degrees to a low of 60 degrees. Sunday will be mostly sunny, with a high of 72 degrees and a low of 47 degrees. Monday will be mostly cloudy, with a high of 66 degrees and a low of 46 degrees.